Hello, I'm Jamie and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be giving you a rundown on the season 11 contestants as every year I hear people talk about how they maybe don't know some of the contestants and yes, yeah, so this video should hopefully give you a little bit of information about who the contestants are and what they've been in, what you can watch to kind of familiarise yourself with them. So yeah, this will be a masterclass or a task masterclass on the season 11 contestants. Let's get to it. Right, I don't know actually, I don't know if I have to say this, but I'm going to say it anyway, just in case, but I haven't been to any of the studio recordings, so I have no idea what happens in the show, I have no idea how funny these contestants are, how good they are, who wins at all, I have not seen anything, this is just purely me going off research and my opinion of the contestants themselves. So, starting with Charlotte Ritchie. She is best known for being an actress and a singer-songwriter. So in 2004, she was cast as the lead in a short film when she was just 15 years old called The Open Doors, which also featured Michael Sheen, which is pretty impressive. She then went on to, after graduating university, uh, to star in Fresh Meat as a character called Oregon. In 2015, she joined the cast of Call the Midwife, playing a midwife called Barbara, who is like the sweetest character ever. Um, and after a few years of that, she decided to leave the show to go on to different things. And one of those different things was BBC's Ghosts, which if you've watched any other videos on my channel, you'll know I am a massive, massive fan of. BBC's Ghosts has also had some other contestants in Taskmaster, for example, Wally Adafopi and Katie Wicks. So she might have some kind of inside knowledge of the show, like going into it. I don't know how much they can talk about it after it's actually been announced, but yeah, so she could have some inside information. And I would highly recommend watching Ghost. She plays the lead character, Alison, who inherits a house that's haunted by ghosts and only she can see them. And it's absolutely brilliant. Most recently, she was cast as a character called George in May Martin's Feel Good, which is kind of an exploration of sexuality and a really good comedy. So those are her most notable appearances. She has appeared in a few other shows and films and she's appeared on 8 out of 10 Cats once. And yeah, she's absolutely brilliant. So her personality seems really fun and bubbly and I've kind of got this from outtakes of uh, of ghosts mainly and also interviews that she's done and she seems really really well, well presented, bubbly. She often plays characters that are kind of like higher class um, kind of, I don't know whether that's representative of her life but yeah, uh, most notably she played a character in Stuff That's Flats where she's kind of like this very privileged um, woman trying to kind of you know, relate to people that don't have much money and it's absolutely hilarious. So I don't know whether that would come into play with her kind of character on the show, but yeah, we'll see. She does seem very friendly and bubbly and she has said in interviews that she does want to go into more comedy, which is shown by kind of how she's moved from Call the Midwife, which is a very like heavy drama to light-hearted things like ghosts. As for a special skill or an advantage that she may have, she, as I said before, she is a singer and songwriter. She is part of a band called the All Angels and that's kind of, it's like classical music and they've sold over like one million copies of their albums. So absolutely brilliant. And Taskmaster does seem to have a lot of songwriting tasks or songs that include music. So she could be very, very good at that sort of thing. That would, yeah, like, I didn't know she was a singer, um, but she sang in the Christmas special of Ghost and I was amazed by how good she was. And then um, someone on Instagram actually DM'd me and said, oh, she's actually part of this like classical music group, which is pretty cool. And like, I can't wait to see her. I think she is going to be amazing. Within the sound of silence. The next contestant is Jamali Maddox and he is best known for being a stand-up comedian and like a presenter in documentary. So he's performed on Live at the Apollo a few times and like um, Comedy Central shows and he actually won the Chortle Student Com Comedian of the Year Award in 2014. However, he is most known for his documentary, Hate Thy Neighbour, which is when he goes off like all around the world and interviews um, racists basically and very like extreme extremists and yeah, he, he's very kind of good at talking to people and a lot of his shows kind of revolve around kind of race and racism. So it'd be very interesting to see him kind of not in that because I do think he's very funny, but like 
a lot of his jokes do around, revolve around the same thing and around this documentary he's done, which it is an incredible documentary. It's made uh, with Vice and they've done a lot of really good things like that. So yeah, he goes around the world interviewing extremists and kind of then he goes around and like, makes fun of them. And it's absolutely brilliant. I highly recommend watching it. And he is very kind of like charismatic because like, yeah, he manages to talk to these people that, you know, would normally not really talk to him. So he's very charismatic and he has a really, really good stage presence, which I think would be very interesting to see in like the show. So as for an advantage, I think he is going to be really, really good at dealing with Greg criticising him and stuff like that, because like he literally interviews extremists. So Greg should be very easy to deal with. So yeah, I think I think he'd be quite good at kind of maybe calming Greg down, talking through, explaining things like that. Yeah, I think he's going to be really good. The next contestant is Lee Mack, who is probably the most requested comedian to go on to um, Taskmaster. Like I've, every time I see people ask, who would you want to see on Taskmaster? Lee Mack's name is always in their list. And he is a comedian and actor and writer, I guess. So he started comedy in TV with ITV Sketch Show. And then he created his sitcom, Not Going Out, which in which he is a writer, he's the creator of, and he also writes and stars in it. And this also features a lot of Taskmaster alumni, for example, Tim Vine from season six, Hugh Dennis and Katie Wicks, which, you know, again, three contestants that he's very familiar with. And maybe that again, like I said, they might have given some tips and stuff like that. So he would have an idea of what the show is like, whereas Jamali might not. Um, I obviously don't know how much he watches the show or anything like that. Lee Mack is most well known, at least for me anyway, for his role as the team captain in would I Lie to You, which is an absolutely amazing, amazing panel show. And in this, he has also interacted with loads and loads of Taskmaster contestants, as it's a show that a lot of comedians um, come on to. And he's also interacted with Taskmaster himself, Greg Davis, multiple times on the show, and has also served as a guest team captain on Cats Does Countdown, which again, I highly recommend. He's been on a lot of panel shows, that's kind of his strong point. So I definitely feel like he'll be very, very good in the studio especially because he is very witty, so he would have, might be, he'll be very quick with comebacks. And I think for the tasks themselves, again, he's very good with wordplay, so I feel like he might be a bit like Richard Osman with kind of like picking apart the task and like kind of changing, you know, messing with the words and, you know, coming up with the creative solution. However, I do think because he is so witty and he's so used at, so used with um, Would I Lie to You about being told something and going along with it immediately, he might not he might do that as well, so he might go along with, with his first idea and not really change from that. Because with Would I Lie to You, you can't really say one thing and then go back on yourself, because it, it would ruin your lie. So I reckon he might kind of be used to that and being like, go with his first idea, which could be an advantage, but it could also disadvantage him at some points. I also think he wouldn't be that afraid to stand up to Greg, because he's kind of used to making fun of himself. He does that a lot on show especially would I lie to you like him and David have kind of like David's the posh one and make fun of him for being posh but then Lee is the kind of working class common one and they make fun of him for that so I don't think he's going to be too afraid at the taskmaster like picking him apart because he does that to himself a lot. Something that may serve as an advantage for Lee is that he actually hosted a show called Lee Max All-Star Cast and with that he sets um, the audience like little silly tasks to do and he gets them to compete in order to win a spot in a sketch show at the end of the show so that kind of I know it's not exactly the same as Taskmaster like they are very different shows but the kind of setting tasks for people is very similar in that regard so maybe he might be kind of he's already set silly tasks so he might be able to think of funny ways to complete those silly tasks if that makes sense but yeah, Lee Mack, I am very, very excited for. I think he's going to be absolutely hilarious. And yeah, I, I cannot wait. I think he's going to be brilliant. Because a lot of the time they make fun of Lee for being a bit dumb and not very educated. So it'd be very interesting to see how he works out the tasks. Because again, like I've said, he's very, very quick with like his mind. Like, oh, I just, I can't believe it. Sometimes it's like absolutely unbelievable how quick he is with remarks and stuff. So I think he's actually going to do very well on Taskmaster, definitely. So next up is Mike Wozniak, who is a comedian, writer, actor, and director. He's 
he's done a lot. So, however, he's most well known for playing the part of Brian in Greg Davis' sitcom Man Down, which obviously he's going to have a good relationship with Greg. I absolutely love it when Taskmasters personally know either Greg or Alex because it just brings such a really, really cool dynamic to the show. And Man Down also features Roisin Conaty, who was on the first season of the show and was absolutely hilarious, absolutely hilarious. Like, I think Mike is going to be absolutely brilliant with kind of what he brings to the show. I've seen some, I've seen Man Down and it's really good. And the way the outtake's absolutely hilarious. You can kind of, I just, they do some crazy stuff on that show. And yeah, I don't think Mike is going to hold back with anything really. <laughs> Mike Wozniak also starred in the film Prevenge, which is created by Alice Lowe, and also directed a film called Sump, which was released in 2017. In addition to this, he also hosts a podcast called the St. Elwick's Neighbourhood Association Newsletter Podcast and the Beef and Dairy Network Podcast. He also writes a lot for Small Scenes, which is on BBC Radio 4. So a advantage he's bringing to the show is that he actually won the first ever Taskmaster, which is at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival in 2009. He competed against 20 different comedians, including Mark Watson and Tim Key. And the show is, the first kind of show they did of Taskmaster is very different to what we know now. The concept is the same. But basically Alex set 20 different comedians, a bunch of tasks to do, and they kind of had like monthly tasks by email, including one that was like, put as money, as much money as you can into like my bank or something like that, or the most money into my bank. Um, so yeah, so he's already won this. He knows kind of what to do. So he's definitely got a big advantage going into this. However, Alex was judging them instead of Greg. But yeah, still, this is a very big advantage. He knows what to expect. However, it could be a bit of a disadvantage because obviously these are tasks that he's done over a month, whereas in the actual show, you do like five tasks in a day. So yeah, that could be an advantage, could be a disadvantage. An interesting fact is that he actually went to medical school and practiced as a doctor for some time which I don't know whether that would serve as an advantage, but it obviously shows that he's very smart and any tasks to do with anatomy he might be very good at. I've seen him be described as chaotic, so I feel like he is going to bring a very, very fun energy to the show and I'm very, very excited for that. Definitely, I cannot wait. And last but not least is Sarah Kendall. And Sarah Kendall is an Australian comedian. She's actually the one I wasn't aware, the only contestant I wasn't aware of prior to like researching stuff. And yeah, she seems absolutely hilarious. I cannot wait to see what she's going to do on the show. So she used to be part of an all-female sketch show called The Beehive, which was on E4. And she has done stand-up on those different shows, such as Russell Howard's Good News. She's been on Alan, Alan Davis's As Yet Untitled. And however, he, she's most known for creating, writing and starring in her comedy show, well, comedy show, comedy, um, Frayed, which is her as a, she's like a London socialite almost. And her husband dies and she has no money. And then they realise they have to go back to Australia. And it takes place in the 1980s. I haven't managed to watch the whole show. I've only seen a tra the trailer and a few clips because it's on HBO and Sky and I don't have either of them, but it seems absolutely hilarious. Her like acting is seems really good. Um, obviously, I don't know what her actual personality is like, but from some of the clips I've seen, she does seem very fun and funny. And yeah, I think she's going to be really, really good. She's also done a lot of work on BBC Radio 4, for example, Claire in the Community, um, the Now Show and BBC Radio 4's Quote Unquote. Uh, she also had a series called Sarah Kendall's Australian Trilogy, which was two seasons with three parts on BBC Radio 4. So yeah, if you want to check her out, check her out on BBC Radio 4 and I would definitely recommend Frayed. It seems absolutely like brilliant and I've seen really, really good reviews about it. And I think it's been renewed for a second season, but don't quote me on that. I'm not really that familiar with any of these radio shows. Um, however, I've seen a few clips and she does seem very funny. I think she seems quite charismatic and yeah, I think I think she's one of the only contestants that isn't from the UK that we've actually had. The only other one I can think of is Ashing B who's from Ireland and Catherine Ryan who is from Canada. So it'd be very interesting to see what kind of comedy style she brings to it. It does seem very similar to what we have here because she has lived in the UK for a lot of her life. Um, however, I'm not sure how it's similar 
Australian comedy is to New Zealand comedy, but I really, really liked the New Zealand Taskmaster. And I obviously don't know, they might be completely like worlds apart, but I really like that. And obviously they're quite close together. I don't know whether they'd have the same kind of comedy style, but nonetheless, she seems very entertaining and I cannot wait to see her on the show. So what do I think of season 11? As you can probably tell by kind of like my energy and kind of what I said about the contestants, I am very, very excited. So I actually knew four out of five of the contestants going into kind of like my research and yeah, I absolutely loved the four that I knew and Sarah Kendall seems really, really fun as well. I think there is going to be a really, really good dynamic. So, so obviously, obviously, I don't, again, I don't know, but Charlotte Ritchie seems kind of reserved most of the time, but I feel like she's going to have some very silly moments, but I think she'd be very good. Um, I feel like she'd get kind of flustered. I don't know why, but I just feel like she'll have that kind of energy about her. Uh, Jamali, I think he's going to be very, very like charismatic and like smooth talking to Greg. I think his approach, I don't really know what to think of his approach to tasks uh, because I've only really seen his documentary and some stand up. So I don't really know what to think about his approach to tasks. As for Lee Mack, as I said before, I feel like he's going to be very impulsive with his tasks, but then he's going to be absolutely amazing in the studio. Mike, I think, is going to be just pure chaos throughout the whole thing, but also being very good. I think he's going to be kind of like a mix between Joe Wilkinson and, oh God, I don't know. I just feel like a better at the tasks Joe Wilkinson, like pure chaos, but actually gaining points as well. And Sarah Kendall, again, I'm not too familiar with her, but I feel like she is going to be kind of logical to the tasks um, and yeah, I think they're all. I think we're going to have a very good studio environment with this, as we did with the last season. As for the theme, there's not been too much revealed about it. Like literally, all that we've had revealed is the trailer introducing the contestants and just like yeah, the contestants. So the theme is like they're all on like scooters, which I think is quite funny. And as for the teams, I feel like it should be. Charlotte, Jamali and Sarah on a team and then Lee Mack and Mike Wozniak because first their names rhyme which I just didn't realise Lee Mack, Mike Wozniak so I feel like those two is just going to be pure chaos and like just amazingness and the other three are going to help all bring something different to the team and I think possibly they could be an even better team um, but yeah those are what I think the teams should be as for the trailer, we also see what kind of costumes they wear. So Charlotte is wearing dungarees. Lee is wearing like a biker jacket thing. Jamani is wearing all black. Um, oh, Mike Wozniak is in a full suit. And Sarah is in a uh, boiler suit. So I don't know what that says about their character. But again, I feel like with Charlotte Rich, she's kind of like childlike, funny, bubbly, that kind of vibe. Jamali, it's just kind of like classic, uh, just chill. I feel like he's just a very chill guy. Lee is just kind of like, just whatever he felt like. I feel like Lee is kind of unpredictable with that kind of thing, just whatever he felt like. Mike in a suit is kind of like, he wants to kind of have like a professional kind of reserved energy, but then he's actually like just pure chaos. So like the juxtaposition between the really professional demeanor and his quite chaotic behavior maybe. And the boiler suit is kind of a classic Taskmaster outfit. So I feel like Sarah is going to have a very straightforward approach, but also funny as well. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please give it a like. It's really appreciated. And comment down below what you think of season 11. Are there any character, any contestants that you really, really look are looking forward to? Is there anybody that you didn't quite know, but are gonna like familiarize yourself with? And who do you think is going to win season 11? Very premature, but why not? Um, and if you want to see more videos related to Taskmaster and also uh, other shows, mainly ghosts, then please subscribe and yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.